Okay, so in this video, we're going to add absorption into our lung models to see kind of how that complicates the process. Okay, so let's basically, we're just going to add an additional step to our lung model where we start again with, you know, concentration ET and volume. And then before we start taking our breaths, we're going to absorb some amount of that chemical into our bloodstream. Right, so out of the lungs into our bloodstream, we're going to absorb a, a fraction, absorb fraction alpha of that concentration, bringing down this concentration in your lungs by a fraction of alpha, because that's being you know absorbed into your body. So you like oxygen or something gets absorbed by in your lungs, it gets absorbed into your blood. Okay. So then the concentration after this absorption process would be 1 minus alpha ET, right? What's remaining is 1 minus alpha of the original. We absorbed a fraction alpha, then what's remaining is the fraction 1 of this original. Okay? And your volume is unchanged by this process. And then from here, we just apply, you know, the same uh, lung model that we had before. We do an exhale of, you know, W liters, right? And that changes our volume to V minus W, but it doesn't change the concentration. This stays at one minus alpha, right? And then we're going to inhale W liters of a new concentration, right? This outside air is gonna have different concentration. Let's say gamma millimoles per liter. Okay, so then, the concentration at the end, the final volume is V again, and then we saw from before that we can represent, you know, this new amount, this new concentration by 1 minus V of my original concentration, which for this we can kind of ignore this first part, right? So our original concentration before we started taking breaths is 1 minus alpha CT, so the concentration minus the absorption, plus my gamma. Right where, uh, right, so this gives us the new concentration for our breath, right? And recall that Q was given by W over V. Okay, so in the last video we derived where, where this comes from. And now in this, all we're doing is we're kind of adding in this extra bit. But to the right of this, this is the original lung model. And then this is plus absorption. Absorb. Okay, the original lung model gives us 1 minus Q times my concentration plus gamma Q gives me the next concentration. And then this plus absorption part tells me how to get from CT to 1 minus alpha. Okay, so my new system, right, my new model, the lung, gas exchange in the lung plus absorption is given by CT plus 1 is 1 minus Q fraction, right? This is the breath fraction. 1 minus alpha, this is the absorption fraction. Concentration at the previous time for the breath and before the absorption, plus, you know, my gamma Q, my ambient concentration times this breath fraction, okay? And, you know, when alpha is equal to zero, you get the original lung model, right? Right, when alpha is zero, this is just CT plus one equals one minus Q times one times C. Right, that's the same thing that we had in the previous set of videos. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's say we are back to a standard male adult lung, right? And so let's say that they have a lung volume of 6 liters and a breath volume of 0 0.6 liters. Well, then in our model, this translates to a Q, okay, which is W over 0.6 over 6 of 0 0.1. Right? That would be our the fraction of the breath to the total volume. Okay, and let's say we're interested in tracking oxygen concentration. Okay. Let's say that this is our maybe our CT, 
to be tracking oxygen. So then let's say that the outside concentration of this ambient or environmental concentration is going to be gamma is, let's say, 21.21 millimoles per liter. Okay. And then let's say that your lungs absorb 30% of the oxygen in them. Okay, so then that means my alpha is going to be 0 0.3. Okay, so then the model of this lung with this outside concentration, this lung absorption parameter alpha, gives me the model Et plus 1 equals 1 minus Q. 1 minus alpha Et plus gamma Q. And then I plug in my numbers. So I have 1 minus 0 0.1 gives me 0 0.9 times 1 minus alpha, which is 0.3. So that gives me 0 0.7 plus gamma, which is 0.21 times Q, 0.1. Right? And so let's simplify this a little bit. This gives me. 0 0.63 Et plus 0 0.021. Okay, so this is my new model for this gas exchange of oxygen, where I'm absorbing 30% of oxygen between, you know, between my breaths. Before I take a breath, I'm absorbing 30% of the oxygen in there, and I exhale, and then I inhale more oxygen in the environment, and so on. Okay, so in this case. Maybe we're interested in how, how is the equilibrium different, right? So before, in the previous model, right, equilibrium concentration was exactly equal to the outside concentration, right? Which makes sense, because we're thinking about concentration after taking a breath is a weighted average of concentration in your lungs with the concentration outside. So uh, when they're in equilibrium, that'd be when you're trying to take away the average of the same number twice. So when the equilibrium concentration is the same as the outside concentration, then your weighted average is just going to give you that number back. Okay? But now, this is not going to be true. Right? Because we have this absorption in here that kind of complicates uh, what's going on. Okay, so let's compute the new concentration. We try to compute it. Okay, if I look for C star equals 0 0.3, C star plus 1, right? The concentration equilibrium is when the input and the output are the same. So if I input C star and I go through the update function, I get out C star. So I want to look for this concentration value that makes this true. If I subtract 0.63 C star from both sides, 1 minus 0 0.3 star is equal to 0 0.01. This gives me 0 0.37 C star 1, and then I divide by 0 0.37. Right, and that gives me C star is equal to 0 0.057, which you'll note in this case is less than the outside concentration, which was 0 0.21. Right, so because I'm absorbing 30% of the oxygen every time, then now my equilibrium concentration is a lot smaller than just the ambient concentration. Because, you know, if it's exactly the ambient concentration, then I'm going to absorb some of that and then I'm going to have to take in more. And so it's not going to be a perfectly balanced system anymore. Um, so this adding in this absorption here kind of complicates the dynamics and moves that equilibrium from simply just being in balance with the outside. Now you also have to balance out that absorption. Okay. And so in general, when you have these weighted averages with absorption, start with your weighted average, and then maybe you have an absorption parameter on one of your values. Okay?